notice that sensations or feelings or thoughts will reappear and that uh, some of what you were saying earlier is just a conditioned belief that comes in a split second later and says that they're my sensations mm-hmm. or thoughts or beliefs. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting. They are yours. They are yours. You as consciousness. You see. They are your sensation, your perceptions. I would say consciousness doesn't have beliefs. (laughs) What does it need to believe? Belief 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 is uh, it's a holding on to a body of thoughts without any evidence. That's what the belief is. It's like I believe in Santa Claus, I believe in Tooth Fairy, I believe in uh, Martians, blue, with their blue, big green horns, you know. There's no evidence. That's what the belief is. So consciousness doesn't do belief here. So yes, these thoughts, these sensations, these perceptions are yours as consciousness. Right now, I, perceive this perception. But what is the I? You see? In ignorance, we believe I is some limited thing, some limited form, a limited body-mind. But if you turn your attention to what perceives right now, because it's you're perceiving right now, you'll just find an open field of perception. An open, spacious, aware presence. Whatever way you, you word it, you, you won't f- find, oh, well, yeah, it starts here and ends here. So the I, the true I, is borderless presence. So we use the term universal. Because there isn't the beginning or an end to it. It doesn't. It's not between this point and that point, or between this experience and that experience. And the I that perceives doesn't re- need the perception to know that it is. In other words, I don't know that I am because I'm perceiving you. I know that I am directly. Whether I'm perceiving you or not, I know I am. So self-knowingness is independent of world body-mind perceptions, independent of the senses, independent of experiences. So I don't need experiences in order to be conscious. I can be conscious of experiences, of perceptions, of colors, of a rainbow, of a snowfall. I can be conscious of the perception. But I don't need the perception to be conscious. So you don't need your dreams to be. In fact, in your deep sleep, in the deep sleep, you are. There are no dreams. In the dream state, you are, and there are dreams. You're dreaming. (laughs) You're hopefully enjoying images and sensations and whatever the dream. If we are dreaming, then you, you say it's my perceptions, my sensations. Yes? Hopefully they're happy ones. Why not happy ones? So why are they not happy? It's a good question. I'm perceiving awful thoughts and sensations and... So then you say, why? So the, the, the dream, the waking dream, and the night dream are important part of the way consciousness plays the game. What 
are an important part in which consciousness plays the game. So consciousness says, okay, let's set up the dream, the waking dream, the night dream. Let's set it up. Perceptions, sensations, thoughts. Let's set it up. And the way it's going to be played is that it will get dark and gloomy. And when it gets dark and gloomy, uh, I will actually let's backtrack a little bit. I will separate myself out of myself. In fact, that's not possible. Consciousness <laughs> can't say, but it's it's in the dream. So in the dream, I'm gonna dream. Okay, I'm conscious. I'm gonna dream. I'm gonna separate myself as Julian, as Magdalene, as Vicky, etc. I'm gonna separate myself. And as I separate myself, the way the game goes is it's gonna get dark and gloomy and thunder and boo and all these you know scary things gonna arise. So I can run back to my wholeness. And when I run back to my wholeness, the way consciousness plays it is that the dream goes on, but it's a sweet dream. Did I? Did you get that? It's sort of like going to the amusement park. Yes. You go on the roller coaster and you get really scared, and then yes. you get off and everything's. Okay. And you run back to mommy. Yes. There's <laughs> 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 always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but you loved it, right? You, you, we pay money. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You want, I want to see the the guy that spits a fire. And, you know, yes, we pay money for that. <laughs> this is why sometimes people say, "What do you mean? Like, you know, we love our suffering, and our misery. What are you talking about?" I say, "What? You, I'm talking about. That's how it is. We love our suffering. We love our stories. Actually, if you look at in ignorance, people they're always telling their stories." You know, oh yeah, and he did this to me, and I did that, and I was able to save him and her. I was so great, and everybody else was so stupid. But I, you know, they repeat the stories, and the stories are unhappiness. But the problem is that we get stuck in our story, and we get stuck believing it. Well, we don't like get off the roller coaster. Yeah, we, yes. <laughs> we well, stay. The, I mean, the story is more uh, is more amusing <laughs> we, when we are believing it. You know. Yeah, but the problem <laughs> is that that. You know, the ideal would be we completely 100% drop the story. Yes. But what happens, at least with me, is, you know, little bits of the story continue on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they hold, mm -hmm. they have, yeah. they have some hold on reality, on supposed reality. Well, you know, the fishermen, when they go fishing, they go fishing a 300 pound tuna. They put in a, a one pound fish. With the one pound fish, they get a 200 pound tuna. So don't underestimate those little, you know, it's just a, like a little bit of my story. Be watchful because it's like the bamboo, you know. The bamboo, you can. Uh, Dig out the bamboo, but you leave a few pieces, you know, here and there. You come back three years later. <laughs> I can't <laughs> <laughs> You see, shoot here, you shoot there, you know. I know. <laughs> and then you have to dig down four feet to 